in a minute or so because you should, you know, stop the full Not yet, but you know. Maybe that'll probably be better than you can do. You won't see that, right? One minute to go to the lobby. Then you're in charge of going on it when you know, so for anything. We want to do our best not to get it. We don't want to get in there. We need to get going on it here. So this is standard. We think we don't have copyright to it. And we can shut it down. We have a lot of it. That's why we turn it on. So that's why we're not streaming. Facebook will shut it down. You didn't pay. Usually it's when you do the whole thing. Which we're doing right now. If we did just like a short bit of it, like a clip, but they don't get that anymore. But when you do the whole thing, it's like when they're not going to get the whole thing down. It is when you're going to do the whole thing. Thank you, sorry, it's a little jump around and you know, do your best, we appreciate it. Mm -hmm.
um, jam has started. Everyone's there. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure how many showed up. Does anyone know 67. how many? 67. 67. Awesome, awesome number. But it has started. Um, it is for four years to fifth grade. Get your kids registered if they haven't come yet. And your kids means any kid you know, not just your own children. Bring them on Wednesday night. Um, Wednesday, October 28th, hallelujah, Trunk or Treat Party is happening. A little bit different this year. We're trying to make sure that we do what we need to do. It's going to be held in the parking lot. Um, we need anyone who wants to open their trunks and pass out candy um, or treats to sign up for a sheet in the foyer. There's a sign-up sheet out there. Um, just helps, help us out so we can plan out accordingly for where people will be. We need candy, so bring your candy and put it in the box that's out there. Regardless, bring your own, bring candy and help. We need help in the kitchen for jam. Okay, so we need additional help on Wednesday night. It's also for jam. So if you are able, available, even if it's not every week, talk to Judy or Beth or Jen, I think, also, right? Yeah. Yep. And um, talk to them about getting, getting in here when you can to help out. Women's Ministries is going to be holding a game night for ladies here at the church Friday, October 23rd at 6.30. Um, that should be a lot of fun. It always is when we get together, so come on that. Put that in your calendars, October 23rd. Also, Women's Ministries is starting a women's small group. Um, it's going to be held on Saturday. The first one's going to be held on Saturday, October 24th at 9 a.m. at Tiffany Bachman's. Um, she is hosting and leading this study by Pris Priscilla. I'm sorry, this is not Priscilla Shire. Right? I said that wrong? Right. The Armor of God. Um, see Tiffany, and there's a sign up also out there for that if you're interested in that. Um, day one. If you've not had Wolf It Down barbecue, you are missing something. If you have, you know what to expect. Um, Pete Day at PTO has been doing a fundraiser for Wolf It Down barbecue. Um, I had taken pre orders. But what we didn't know is he was actually going to double whatever the orders were. So even if you don't have your order, in fact, especially if you don't have your order in, we would like you to come and get Wolf and Down Barbecue, help support the Fayette PTO. That is this coming Thursday, October 15th, from 4 to 7. So um, come on down, get your barbecue. If you did place an order, pick up a couple extra. They'll go in the freezer, they'll go in containers, they'll be leftovers for lunch. That help support the Fayette PTO. We are having harvest dinner, but not as we've had harvest dinner before. Um, with things going on, we need to serve food and such to help make sure that we're being safe. We do have sign-ups out on the table in the entry when you came in with hand sanitizer is. There's three sheets. One of those is just to sign up how many people are coming, so we can plan for tables and chairs, so we make sure we get the appropriate number set up in the appropriate distance. The other two sheets are for food. Typically for harvest we say, bring what you like. Well, we're kind of trying to limit that because we have to have people serve food this year. So there is a sign-up sheet out there that includes turkey and ham, potatoes, and you'll see specific things. Just sign up for what you're bringing. We wanted to try to make sure we had a good balance. Um, it makes it a little easier. You don't have to think quite so hard about what you're going to bring. I know some of us painstakingly think, oh my goodness, what am I going to bring? Now, you're not off the hook totally if you just use a dessert because you have to decide what dessert you're going to bring. Because we are going to plate those up or bowl those up as what's appropriate for whatever you're bringing. So, if you sign up for dessert, you still have a lot of thought process, but some of the others make it a little easier for you. So, just sign up if you're going to bring something, and then even if you can't, if you hopefully you can bring something, still sign up for how many people you plan on bringing with you for Harvest Dinner next week. But it's a double celebration. We're not only celebrating the harvest, we're celebrating someone's wee one that day, as Ruth would say. Um, we are celebrating Elliot Robert Timothy Wade that day. He was born in May. He is the beloved grandson of two members of our church. Um, and he happens to be the younger brother of Evie, which is probably just as important as all the rest. Um, and the parents, you know, they're just an extra, but parents happen to be Brennan and Bethany Wade. So we'll be celebrating him as well. So come for the Harvest Center, come help us celebrate that day, the birth of Robert. <clears throat> Thank you, Suzanne. We're going to sing a song in that called Goodness of God, and after that we'll have a scripture reading. But I uh, just want to say about the kids' ministry on, on Wednesday, we're so poor. I'm 
telling you, 67 kids, it was, it was just terrific, and they were all so well behaved, right? They were so well behaved, sitting there, and didn't, they felt comfortable, and we had a good crew. One thing we lack, we do need more help in the kitchen. We really do. We, we, were, we were swamped in the kitchen, right? Wow, get the food out. So if you can come, I know there's a big volunteer force. We had 25 volunteers, maybe, maybe more. 27, but not, not a lot in the kitchen. People are avoiding the kitchen for whatever reason. So go talk to uh, go talk to Sandy, Sandy Rice, and she'd be happy to get you involved in the kitchen. All right, let's sing this together. So good today that we can sing about the goodness of God. Let this song flow from your heart. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord.
Ephesians 3, third chapter, verses 20 and 21, from the message. God to do, can do anything, you know, far more than you could ever imagine or guess, or request in your wildest dreams. He does it not by pushing us around, but by working within us, his spirit deeply and gently within us. <coughs> Glory to God in the church. Glory to God in the Messiah and Jesus. Glory down all the generations. Glory through all millennia. Oh, yes. We could ever breathe. 
us right now. Thank you that Jesus is the name that is above every name. And that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Amen. Who's going to sing for us this time?
Paulding. There is a wonderful time of fellowship at Paulding. I've never been there before. It was a new experience for me. Whoa! Big town at Paulding, right? But you know what? The people were very hospitable, and it was great because, you know, you guys all know my missionary kid background, and there was a missionary kid there in the service, too, and she was all happy, and I said, yeah, we could be weird together. And she's like, yeah, no. Missionary kids are weird. Nobody understands us. That's awesome. But it was awesome, great time of fellowship, and it was their faith promise someday. So yeah. I hope they met their goal. I think they did. I think they exceeded their goals, and that was awesome. We're going to sing one more song, and then we're going to go to prayer. I'm going to share from God's Word today. Today we're going to be talking about our vision as a church, what our, what our vision is, what our purpose is. I'm going to be sharing that. It's going to be a little different sermon from what I normally do. It's more kind of, uh, much more kind of focused on just the mission and vision of our church. And it's going to be good, though. We're going to share and have lots of scriptures and sharing what the core beliefs are of us as Christians and what we are about in this community. But let's sing this first, Our God.
Lord, there are those who are here today who feel an emptiness in their souls. They feel something that is missing. And I pray today that you, gracious God, will reveal Jesus. Reveal our need, our lack of you. May we today, may today be the day where we say, Lord God, I know I'm a, I've been a good person a lot of my life, but there's still something in my heart that I need. And I need you, a holy God, to forgive me. Would you come into my heart and to be my Lord and Savior? And I pray today, Lord, you do your work in all of our hearts. Lord, our heart goes out today to so many who are suffering right now, who are ill, who have had surgeries, people in our church who have got some bad news recently. We ask that, Lord, you will be so close to them. And Lord, we know that you still heal today. Yesterday, today, and forever, Jesus is the same. You are a healing God, and we pray you reach out and heal and touch. In your precious name we pray. Well, today I want to share a vision statement with you, and I want to talk about our purpose as followers of Jesus Christ. And it's very important, isn't it, your purpose? I mean, those of you who are moms know what your purpose has been for a long time, right? Or should I say, purpose serves. And it's always surprised me as Ruth and I have, as I at least have gotten older, and I thought, I thought we'd be done with the parenting thing, you know, I thought, you know, your parent, they leave and then you're not a parent anymore, <laughs> just kidding. <clears throat> I never realized that, but I never thought how you're still always a parent. And how your kids, even though they're adult, still are like kids, still behave like kids when they're around mom and dad. And it's just amazing, you know, how your, your purpose as a parent is, it just goes on and on. You're a parent, so you can't unparent yourself. You're just still that parent. <clears throat> and so today I want to talk about our purposes of following Jesus Christ. And our first purpose, I'm going to talk about a purpose statement today. Our first purpose is to know Jesus. To know Jesus. And now let me give you the whole thing today. So that you've already got it. Our purpose is to know Jesus and to make Jesus known. How simple is that? Right? Bringing it all really down to just a quick statement. Know Jesus, make Jesus known. I'm going to read a few verses to you. First is from 2 Peter. You see it on the screen. And there's two verses in particular I'm going to focus on today. And this first verse says, But grow... In the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Grow in the grace, and we're going to be talking about that. What does it mean to grow in grace? And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory, both now and to the day and to the day of eternity. Amen. Next verse about knowing Jesus. Therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him. Again, alluding to discipleship. And then there's a longer verse, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Tells us this about dis discipleship and following Jesus. His divine power, now listen to this, has granted us all things that pertain to life and godliness. In other words, he's given you everything you need. He doesn't just say be a Christian. He'll give you everything you need to live the kind of life he wants you to live. His divine power has granted us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his, to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desires. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, and virtue, 
knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly, sisterly affection, and love. Wow, there is a massive series of sermons right there which we're going to take on one day. And then Ephesians 4.15, but speaking the truth in love. Hello? Some of us speak the truth, but it's not always in love. But it says, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head, even Jesus Christ. That's Ephesians 4, 15. So, our purpose is to know Jesus, which speaks to discipleship, right? And then our other purpose, or along with that purpose, is to make Jesus know. So you know Jesus, your purpose as a follower of him is to know him, to grow in him, to follow him, but then also to make Jesus know. Uh, you are the light of the world, says in Matthew 15. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to the whole house. In the same way, let your light shine before people, before men, so that they will see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Amen. Make Jesus known. You are the light of the world today. The light of the world shining in the darkness. And Acts chapter 1 verse 8. This is how we can become the light of the world. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And next, and this is what one of the verses I'll talk about today, 2 Corinthians 5.20. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. Did you realize you are an ambassador today? Turn to your neighbor and say, you're an ambassador. You're an ambassador. Yes, you are. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ as though Christ were making his appeal through us. We employ you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. That's 2 Corinthians 5.20. And then John chapter 13, 34 and 35. A new commandment I give to you that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this all people will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And then he said, and he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So our purpose is to know Jesus and to make Jesus know. So today we're going to look at a couple of verses in order to discover what that really means. To know Jesus and to make Jesus know. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 18. We're going to focus on that for some time. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So what are we to grow in? We're to grow in grace and we're to grow in knowledge. Now, most believers are familiar with the term, you are saved by grace, not by faith. So you are saved by grace alone, through faith, not by works. Second, sorry, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, not of works, so that no one can boast. I want to explain what that means. When your mother gave birth to you, do you realize that you did absolutely nothing? You took all the nutrients, 
You took all the goodness. You had a free place to live. You didn't pay rent. She gave you all the things that you needed. And when the time was right, you didn't climb out. You didn't even do that for yourself. She had to push you out into the world. In other words, it's all about what mom did. Not what you did. You did nothing. Absolutely nothing. You were born idle, just being there in all that comfort. It's all about what mom did. Now becoming a follower of Jesus Christ is the same thing. It is not about anything you did or do, but what Jesus did. What Jesus did on the cross. We have to fundamentally always realize it's not about what you can do, ever. It's all about what Jesus did. People always think that they can get to heaven by being nice. If I had a dollar for everyone that said, well, I'm a good guy, I'm going to heaven, I'd be a rich man. And let me tell you something about nice people. It is a wonderful thing to be a nice person. You know that? You've all had nasty neighbors from time to time. Or maybe not. Maybe you've lived in the same place and they've always been great. I've had a few nasty neighbors from time to time. And I know some of you had too. It is much better living next to a nice family. I want to tell you, it really is. People that come over and say hi and you help each other out and you take each other's stuff if they need it and you support one another through all kinds of things. However, nice doesn't get you into heaven. It never did. It never will. Jesus gets you into heaven. You didn't choose Jesus. Do you realize Jesus chose you? You know, in schoolyards in Britain, we played lots of games. I don't know if they did this in the States, but we always played games. And it's interesting, you know, one of the big games in England when I was growing up was Cowboys against Indians. Woo! I shouldn't do that. It's not political or correct to do that anymore, but... You know what I mean? It was always cowboys fighting the Indians and everybody always wanted to be on the cowboy side because the Indians always lost. And when you were a captain, you had to pick. And people were desperate and that. You know, I remember being a captain and people saying, pick me, pick me, please pick me. They didn't want to be an Indian. They always wanted to be cowboys. But you know what? You couldn't decide. Someone had to pick you. The captain had to pick you, and it depended on what the captain did and said, whether you were a cowboy and an Indian. And you know, today, it's, we've got to remember that it's all about Jesus. Jesus chooses you. You don't choose him. Now, God works in your heart, and he works in your mind. And you realize you need forgiveness. Do you realize that everyone needs forgiveness? You may be the nicest person in the world, but there's some things in your past that nobody knows about that you need forgiveness for. And you have to ask God to forgive you and commit to following Him. You know, last week, Evie had, and by the way, she was at Jam this week, and she just loved it. Didn't she love Jam? Absolutely loved it. She just was so excited. She could hardly go to sleep that night. But she proudly handed me a picture last week. And I said, uh, I said excitedly to her, did you do that? And then she looked at me with the biggest smile and she says, yes, I did it just for you. I did it just for you. And that melted my heart. And when Jesus came and he died on the cross, he did it just for you. If you had been the only person in this world now think about this. I know some of you don't realize God loves you this much, but he really does. If you had been the only person in the world, Jesus still loves you that much. He would have come and he would have died for you. That's how much he loves you. You know, have you ever climbed to the top of a big hill? 
it's getting less and less, isn't it, these days for us. Climbing, we used to run up hills and get to the top. And when you get to the top of a hill, have you ever said to yourself, wow, I did it. I did it. And you feel so good. However, you are never going to get to heaven and say, I did it. That's never going to happen. Because you didn't do it. God did. God did it. And it doesn't matter if you're a criminal or the nicest person in town or the nicest person for yet. God isn't interested in how good we are. Because both the criminal and the nice person must go to the same cross and bow before the cross and ask Jesus Christ to come into their hearts and lives. Now, not only does God save you by grace, but he also expects us to grow in grace. 2 Peter 3.18 But grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When you have kids, would you agree with me that it costs a lot of money? If your kids are with you, tell them, you cost me a lot. Just kidding. They do. They cost you a lot. And when they're little, it just keeps costing you. It keeps costing you. You don't, you don't, you, you like to see your bank account stay stable. But it never stays stable. It's almost like there's always coming, something coming out of it. It costs a lot. You know why? Their legs get longer. Their feet get bigger. They need new pants. They need new shoes. But it's a wonderful thing, isn't it? To see them change, to see them grow. It's a wonderful thing to watch your kids grow up and become unique individuals. And it's great for you as parents to watch them. Do you realize it's the same thing with God? God loves to watch you spiritually grow. He does. He's watching you right now. And He's cheering you on. He doesn't expect you to remain as a baby. He doesn't have this view of, you know, they're a cute little baby, let them stay a baby. No, he wants you to grow in Christ Jesus. He loves to see you grow spiritually. He doesn't want you to remain as, a, as an infant, as a child. Now, growing in grace is all about growing up in Christ. Becoming a mature, adult-like Christian. You see, it's quite possible to receive grace but not grow in grace. And sometimes, you know, you can get stuck. Have you ever been stuck in life, stuck at the same thing, stuck in the same place? You can get stuck as a Christian and almost like be in limbo in your spiritual life. But you know what? God doesn't want that for you. For you. And he doesn't want that for you. He wants you to keep growing. Not only to receive Christ, but grow in grace. And that means... When you ask Jesus Christ into your heart and life, you're obedient to Him. You get baptized. And after you've been baptized, you also ask God to sanctify you. To sanctify you by His Holy Spirit. To make you clean on the inside and to give you the power to live the Christian life. To give you power not to keep falling into the same sins, you know, that used to hold you down and used to keep you back. To cleanse you from the inside. That's what we call sanctification. Where God through his Holy Spirit cleanses you on the inside and gives you victory. Victory over sin. Victory over the devil. Now sanctification is, is, is what we call the normal Christian experience. It's not the abnormal one. It's the normal one. Can you imagine if the world was sanctified? Wow! Can you imagine what TV? I know some of us are scared to go home and watch TV. It's got like that, hasn't it? You just can't take it anymore. You can't hear any more bad mouthing and running down and people ranting and raving and it's just absolutely, and we're all just holding on and we just can't wait till this whole thing's over. Can you imagine, though, if, every, if the people in your life were sanctified, if your neighbors were sanctified, you'd never have problems with your neighbor again. They would be nice. People would walk, wouldn't talk about you behind your back. 
They wouldn't cut you off in traffic. No one would be jealous or proud. People would tell you the truth. Politicians would be people you can trust if they were sanctified. Teens wouldn't badmouth their parents. They used to call it, what did they call it over in Britain? Lip. Stop giving me that lip. You knew when you were in trouble, didn't you, when you said, stop giving me that lip. So are we getting the picture today? That's what it means to grow in grace. So that which we receive in Christ Jesus develops and grows, and God wants you to become a mature Christian. Now, spiritual maturity has got nothing to do with age. You can be a, a Christian for 40 years and still be taking milk. It has everything to do with your desire to make Jesus the center of your life. You could be 20 years old and be very spiritually mature. And you could have someone who's 80 and is, more, is a lot more immature than you are. Because God doesn't grade by age. It's all about you. All about your desire. So how do you grow in grace? How do you keep growing? So we're saved by grace. We're to grow in grace. You pray on a regular basis. Not just asking God for help when you need it. We've all been there, right? And something goes wrong and you're down on your knees and all of a sudden you're crying and sobbing and calling upon God. And that's a wonderful thing. But God wants us to grow in grace by having a regular prayer life. You read the Bible on a, on a <coughs> regular basis, not just when you're in trouble or when you feel you need some comfort. And some people say, well, you know what, I've never learned how to pray. Do you know how to learn? Do you know how to learn how to pray? Do you know what to do? You do the same thing that when you were just a little, when you were 10 months old. Well, let me ask you this question. Who starts to walk at nine months? Anybody here? Any fast walkers? Who starts? Nobody. We had one in our family walked at nine months. How about who walked before a year old? Most of you. It took me until I was 18 months. Because I was so big. I'm not kidding. Well, you, some of you have seen those baby pictures of mine where I'm not recognizable. Where I was so big and I couldn't, and my mom said, what's wrong with him? How come you can't walk? Well, <laughs> you should have seen how big I was. <laughs> but we have to grow in grace. And you do that by, you, you, you learn how to pray. You learn how, how to do it. You know, you, you can't just say, I don't know how to pray. You learn by doing it. You learn by doing it. You start a prayer meeting in your home. I'm happy to hear people starting prayer meetings, Bible studies. That's what you have to do. Some of you do individual Bible studies with one another. That's amazing. Don't just keep saying, oh, I wish they'd bring back the good old days. Create, create the good old days right now. Anyone can pick up the phone and say, do you want to have a prayer meeting in my house? And just start praying and start reading and start growing in Christ. Get connected to a Sunday school class. We have some really good Sunday school groups. We really do. Attend a Sunday school class regularly. That's how we really get to know people, how you get to make friends. Home Bible studies. Ruth and I still know people, right, from years later. The people that we had home Bible studies with, people we went to their house, or they came to our house, we're still friends. Years and years later, a lot of people that we didn't study with, we're not friends with anymore, we've lost connection with them. But so many people that we spent time in their homes, and fellowship, and praying for one another, laying hands on one another, encouraging one another, crying together. That's how you grow spiritually. Stop saying bring back the good old days. Create the good old days right now in your own home. So spiritual maturity, that's really important. 
This verse also says that we should not only grow in grace, but we should also grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Now throughout your school life you were tested for knowledge. Some of the, te some of the tests you passed, some of them you failed. There used to be a, a, a teacher that used to go in when our Hannah was at school, and she used to always pray for the students. She says, Lord Jesus, help those who are here today who have studied pass this test. It's always about the ones who had studied. And throughout your life, you know, there's no such thing as knowledge that you were born with. There is no knowledge in that brain of yours when you are born. Just a computer that had to learn everything. You didn't come out of your mom knowing quantum physics or who the first president of the United States was. Everything you have in your brain was learned. And some teachers you had kept talking to you about history and the war of independence until you knew what it was all about. And some dad taught you how to change a tire. You didn't know by yourself. They taught you how to change a tire, fix a toilet. You had nothing up there by yourself. They did it. And growing in the knowledge of God is the same thing. You don't have it until you begin to put it in there. Biblically speaking, we are not born in a Christian country. And I'm not knocking him out. No one is ever born in a Christian country. No country can be Christian. Only people can be Christian. You can't call someone who is a rapist a Christian just because they were born in the United States. Only people can become Christian. Only people can grow in the knowledge of God. So how do you grow in the knowledge of God? You gain knowledge by going to church as much as possible. As much as possible. By making your mind listen. You know, it's easy to let your mind glaze over in two places in life. One is when you're in church, and the other one is when your wife's talking to you. <laughs> you know what I mean, guys? Very easy to let your mind glaze over when you're in church or when your wife's talking to you. You know, neither, neither one is a good idea, by the way. I didn't like school very much when I was a teen, so I skipped school a few times to do something I loved. I used to love watching trains. I really did. I used to write down their numbers, and I knew all the different types of train, and I just loved it, so I skipped school to watch trains. However, someone grasped me out. Someone grasped me out, and my mother caught me and took me to school where the principal gave me a hiding. And I grew that day in the knowledge that my mother had eyes everywhere. I knew she had eyes everywhere and so there was no point. So I grew in knowledge. It's the same thing. There is nothing like growing in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's nothing like memorizing scriptures that stay with you your whole life. I learned things as a child that are still in my head. That's why memorizing scripture is so important. Keep doing it. It's never too late. You can keep learning verses and verses and verses all the time. Okay, so we're not going to get into the second part of this sermon today. We'll, leave, we'll start on to that next week. So we are to grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are to be his disciples. So we are to know Jesus and make Jesus known. I want to say today, do you know Jesus? Do you really know him in your heart? Have you asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior? I know you might be a good person today, and I'm not saying that. And I commend people for being good people, but you still need to have your sins forgiven. You still need to ask Jesus. You need to know Jesus, and then you need to make Jesus known. There's some of you who are share Jesus all the time. I hear about your stories, telling people about Jesus, because you know people are getting older. 
people are going to face him one day. And so they need to hear about Jesus from your mouth. Someone's waiting. The devil's trying to silence you. He's trying to shut you up. He doesn't want you to share Jesus. He's going to do, the devil's going to try to do things to you just so that you don't share Jesus. Do you know that? He's going to try to do things to you and get you off, get, get you off center and send something into your life to get you off so that you don't feel like you can share Jesus anymore. And that's the devil. But God wants you to share Jesus. So that is my vision. That is our vision as a church. Know Jesus. Make Jesus known. Let's pray together. And we're going to sing a song. Gracious God, I just thank you today that you have called us to know you and to make you known. Lord, what a joy it is to follow you. Lord, I was not following you for a quite a while in my life. I didn't, I thought it was a joke. I thought it was stupid. I thought it was just for all people. I just thought it was for a certain type of person, but definitely not for me. And what, how wrong I was. How the devil had tricked me into making me think like I could never be like that. I could never be a Christian. I could never be saved. I could never be like those crazy people. But Lord, you showed me that I was wrong and that I needed you and that I needed forgiveness and you forgave me, Lord. You forgave me and you put your spirit in my heart. So I thank you for that day. May there be those today who will ask Jesus, say, Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive my sin. I want to follow you. What's left of my life, I want to follow you, Lord. I'm not a fancy person. I don't know all the right stuff, but one thing I know is I need you. Come into my life today. Amen. And if you do that today, you will come in. And he will be your Lord and Savior. We're going to sing a poem and talk together. <coughs>
mercy and peace rest with us and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Just remind your sign up for the Harvest Center out in the lobby. And if you don't know for sure, Wendy will have the sign up sheets. Just call the church. Thank you.